Toronto. It's been a little while. What, three years? Yeah, about that. And we're back. We've got a new movie for you today. Uh, it's a little bit different. As you can see, it's winter. Uh, we've never done anything in the winter before. It's quite cold. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I don't even know what it is, but it's pretty cold. Are you going to climb a tent or something like that? Like I mean, that. it could be worse in February. Could be, and uh, we're actually going somewhere where it's going to be even colder, and it's actually a sequel to our last one, sort of, because we're going back to Algonquin Provincial Park. Yep. To camp. And you might think, camping in the winter, that's strange. Well, it is, but it's a pretty uh, traditional Canadian activity. We're going to show you what kind of stuff you can do in the winter in Canada, because a lot of people would just rather stay home and watch TV or whatever, but there's so much you can do, and stuff. sometimes it's even free. So. We're gonna show you what you can do, have some fun, and you know, really experience Canada. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the same place, but it's uh, gonna be a completely different trip, so. And we've decided to do some more stuff within our home country of Canada itself, because, I mean, the last few years have been a little bit weird, and travel has become next to impossible, international travel anyway, so we want to, uh, we want to show off what's in Canada and really have some fun with it. Yep. And this time, we, it's not just us going along, we have some guests again this time, there's uh, three people. Um, who you're going to meet in a second, and uh, yeah, it should be pretty fun. Yeah, can't wait. My name's Anne. Uh, I'm from Vietnam. It's my first time camping in the winter. It's like my maybe third or fourth time winter camping. I enjoy the outdoors quite a bit. On this particular trip, I'm mostly looking forward to uh, just kind of challenging myself with some of the typical Canadian winter activities. I'm very, very excited. I love camping, but I've never camped in winter before. I've been to Algonquin Park in winter, and it's really, really beautiful, but I never stayed there, and I'd like to have this new experience, and looking forward to it. Algonquin, for the most of its history, wasn't even settled by humans. There were small groups of Aboriginal tribes who used, used the area for hunting, fishing, and foraging berries, but they never really stayed long. Since the earth is, uh, since the park's on the Canadian Shield, there's not much topsoil, so crops don't really grow, so they couldn't really establish themselves to set up communities. So they come in and come out. In the 1800s, things began to change as British settlers moved in throughout the park to find white pine trees, which are in heavy demand. They'd cut down the trees and throughout the winter, and then in the spring, they'd run them down the rivers, which are swollen from all the melting snow, and they'd do the old log driver's waltz down to the Ottawa River, and then distribute across the country. The park even has a museum near the East Gate, which tells more history on Log Red. It was established as a park in 1893 to establish a wildlife sanctuary. Soon fishermen found the area and eventually became extremely well known for fishing and, and hunting and everything. And then you got Tom Thompson and the group of seven showed up and made it world famous with their uh, very popular artworks. Algonquin's the first provincial park in Ontario, as well as Canada. It has an extremely diverse ecosystem with over a thousand plant species and 200 vertebrate species and like 400 billion mosquitoes. It's inspired countless pieces of art, films, books, and even music. They have a, an Algonquin symphony. Looks like a boot. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got here, and uh, now we're gonna unpack. The place is looking, uh, it's a little tight, but it's warm. So, I mean, that, there's that. Looking forward to this, it'll be fun. It's like a children's bedroom, like, if you have uh, multiple kids. It's cute. Yeah, that, that's good for me. Pretty cozy though. Come on, it's really warm though. Uh-huh. So we are settled into our yurt. It's pretty nice, I guess. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna work this whole thing because there's five people in this very small room, so uh, should be fun. I'm from Russia originally, and my area is called Bashkortostan, and the actual nationality is Bashkirs and also Tatars, very similar. My nationality, Tatars, they're supposed to be nomadic, so a long time ago they didn't live in one spot. They used to ride horses and they moved from place to place looking for resources. And they had these things called yurts, that's where they lived. It's kind of like a big tent. They used to set them up, stay there for a few days and then pack up and go to some other place that is much better. Thanks to heavy inflation in Canada over the past two years, things tend to cost a bit more these days, which makes budget travel tough. Though prices of yurt rentals have not changed, they do cost $347 to rent for three nights, and being able to book them online can be very tough as they sell out quick. The parking permit for a second vehicle on site costs $39. Firewood at the park costs $20 for two bags. 
though you can find wood outside the park bounds cheaper and it's much drier. An additional day pass for Arrowhead Provincial Park cost $21 for one vehicle. The big kicker was the cost of fuel, which was $375 for the trip, and that is only for one of our trucks. Food for five people over four days cost $400. Our supply of beverages for the group cost $330, which is very much a necessity when winter camping. This is the beer, and we are about to go uh, on a beer walk. Yay. Look at here, it's actually really hard. Like, I don't... Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think I want to go on the actual lake. Oh! Okay, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, we are walking on a frozen lake and having a, a beer. But in case the air is not uh, cold enough for your liking, you can make yourself a nice beer coolie. Problem solved. It's a lonely feeling, but a comforting. I'm building a fire, and there's a bunch of kindling here. It was laying around. I don't know, maybe the previous people left it. It feels dry, so I hope it's gonna work, and I have some cheerleader stuff here. Woo! That plan will go up with something. Yeah, it felt Stuff's like 100 years old. You can break it by hand. It smells good. Maybe one side is okay, it seems like everything is kitchen. So which firewood I can use this so one? We can line all this up, yeah. Brace yourselves. Okay. Oh. Well, that worked a little bit. Great. Well, I have to do that a few minutes, yeah. Parkwood. Is of utmost quality. I don't know if the said no one ever. I don't know if the fire's making more steam than I am. <laughs> yeah. Try to do the fire. We were basically like a foot away from it and it was still too cold. So we're back inside where the heaters are. Maybe we'll try again. Maybe make a bigger fire. We'll see. But for tonight, we're staying inside where the heaters are. First morning here, pretty snowy outside, uh, a lot more than we expected actually. I like it, it's really beautiful. So yeah, today we're gonna do some winter activities. Um, not sure what yet, probably uh, doing some hiking and you know, just general exploring of the park and seeing what we can do here in Algonquin in the winter. So first activity of the day is uh, a hike at the uh, Track and Tower Trail here in Algonquin. It's right along Highway 60, it's a pretty popular spot. Today it's pretty quiet because we got a whole lot of snow overnight. 7.5k. Yep, nice easy hike. Yeah, well, it's not too cold. Yeah, it's not that bad. Like once you're in the forest, it, it it seems really cold out here, and it is. It's like minus 20 or something. But once you're in the forest, you warm up and your body heat works and all that. So should be good. Not as much work as the last uh, trail we did in Algonquin with all yeah. those mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, there will be no mosquitoes today. And if there are, uh, we need to run because there's a serious problem. Hiking in the winter proved much harder than we originally expected. Especially when it came to ascending an ice-covered staircase to the trail's lookout point. Best of luck. 
The view from the top was worth the effort though, and went well with our slightly frozen lunch. Oh, no. oh, Getting back down the staircase proved to be a okay. bit more interesting though. Bit of a butt slide down the hill. Oh god. Oh shit. Oh my god. So much fun. I wanna go again. Ooh, our head just missed that rock. <laughs> The trail continued on, but as we approached the end, something unexpected happened. We encountered some tracks like three kilometers from the end of the, the trail, thinking that they were going the opposite direction of us, and uh, lo and behold, that was not the case. We've spotted moose. What? That noise is startling them. Sorry. Yeah, the moose? Yep. Moose it's a bit nerve-wracking, but pretty cool. Yeah, what is moose, plural? I think it's a moose. Moose, yeah. Moose, uh, <laughs> mooses. Fellas, just gonna walk on by here. It's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> Took yeah. a while but, to uh, make yourself past them. It was a bit scary. Yeah. I've been outdoors and camping so often, and I always wanted to see a moose. And today I was like, oh my god, moose, no! It was cool. Yep. I think that was the highlight of that trail was seeing the moose yeah. for me. Yes. And yeah. they're sliding down the stairs. Yeah. Was it? Kind of. Well, you almost died. Oh man, it's so much ice. Yeah, it's, like, it, it's a real challenge, but it's fun too. Yeah, the stair sliding thing is fun. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like all of it was uphill, so we're happy for some of the downhill. So I think we're gonna go back to the campsite and have some hot chocolate with, from Zelina. Very nice. All right, let's do it. In winter, after hiking for such a long time and being outside, the best way to warm up is hot chocolate. And what's better than hot chocolate? Spiked hot chocolate. I don't know the proportions, we didn't bring any shot glasses, so I'm just gonna pour it. At the end, you can decorate it any way you want. I brought mini marshmallows. You could put whipped cream, chocolate syrup, up to you. Cheers. Delicious. Yeah, so it's pretty freaking cold out right now. Close it, guys, close it, close it. No, close it. Uh, we were gonna go skating, uh, but it's, yeah, it's like gonna be, feel like minus 30. There's fog rolling in whenever we open the door. Like it's it's pretty cold out there. So tonight we're gonna just stay in here where it's warm. Maybe we'll play some games, drink some beers, and then maybe tomorrow we'll try and go skating. We got up painfully early the next morning and made our way outside of the park to Barry's Bay and the shores of Bark Lake. We come. We're about to go ice fishing. And you can't drive on the lake, but you can take one of these. So we're going to be escorted out there, and uh, hopefully it'll be nice and warm inside the, the little hut. My name is John, I'm from Ottawa, and today we're going to do some ice fishing in Bark Lake. It's a good way just to hang out with your buddies. It's a very social activity. Sometimes uh, the fishing's slow, but you're still having a good time, staying warm, getting some fresh air, and getting out of the city. Well, I started fishing um, when I was about seven years old, and ever since then I found it a way to kind of just kick back and clear my mind and get rid of some anxiety that's built up over the week. So uh, what I usually do is I drop her right down to the bottom, and obviously if we're looking on the screen there, we can see and your line's gonna stop. So that's on bottom right now. I'll reel it up a few feet, and big long rips. And all you're trying to do is get the fish to come in. It's making a lot of noise under there, and sometimes you get like, you know, the lines show up. Oh, there is. Oh, what a lake, or? That's, there you go. That's a lake trip. That's a lake trip. I'll let you hold it for your picture there. <laughs> all right, Josh, celebrate your first catch. <laughs> oh, wow, he's big. That's a great one. Oh, I think. Okay. Similar. Maybe a smith, but it's a trout. Oh, 
they make sounds? Yeah, he's growling. He's angry. <laughs> no, it's uh, he's got air bladder. Oh, okay. So, I didn't know fish make sounds. Yeah, that's just... Uh, I've never heard that fish. Yeah. Is that a trout thing, per se? Or? Uh, pretty much, yeah. They're slimy here. Holy cow. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> So we're on Bark Lake here, um, which is outside of the Algonquin Provincial Park bounds. And you'd think, well, why do you have to leave the park to go fishing? Well, there's a pretty good reason for that. And uh, that's because you're not allowed to fish in Algonquin Park bounds because it's a nature preserve. So you can only fish from April until uh, I think it's October or November or something. And though we didn't catch anything big enough to keep, it was a great experience and something everyone should try. And we can't thank John enough for helping us out with our first attempt at ice fishing. Okay. Rental of the ice fishing hut costs $105, or $35 per person fishing. And in Ontario, you need an outdoors card and a fishing license to fish, which starts at $25 for one year. Live fishing bait varies in price, but you can get an ample supply for $10. Then a box of hand and feet warmers will run about $25 online which gives us a total cost of around $1,747. Or about $349 per person. Though this will change depending on how many people are in the yurt and how you split costs. Did you know that Algonquin covers more than 7,500 square kilometers? And 12% 12, 12 of that is uh, actually just lakes and rivers. Huh. So Algonquin actually borders uh, Northern and Southern Ontario which is what makes the ecosystem here really, really strong because in the north you have your coniferous, uh, coniferous trees, pine trees, spruce, etc. Whereas in the south you get your birch, your, your deciduous trees. So not only does it make like the colors in the fall absolutely incredible because you got your greens, reds, orange, yellow, etc. But it really boosts the ecosystem. So And as a result you have this massive diversity in wildlife population. Do you know that Algonquin has over 1,200 campsites available to the public all mm -hmm. over the park? I don't know how many campgrounds there actually are. There's quite a few and I, wouldn't, I mean, booking this site was unbelievably difficult to do. Like it took us three years to get this campsite. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of them along Highway 60 here, um, mm -hmm. but there's also like there's Brent Campground, Kiosk and Acre, which are more uh, in the north and eastern part of the park. Uh, so they're a little bit more wild. Like some of them, uh, Brent, I believe, uh, doesn't have showers or electricity. So you just have to deal with it. But you, you get to see the more hardcore side of Algonquin on the other campgrounds, whereas the Highway 60 stretches, there's a lot more, but they're, uh, it's a bit more touristy, so if you're kind of fair weather camper, a Highway 60 road is the way to go, I think. Yeah. But I didn't know there's 1,200, that's quite a few. Yeah, and I mean, there's a good, good variety too, right? Like you have your group camping, you can have yurts, your normal sites, backcountry. Electric, non-electric. Yeah. Algonquin is the only park in Canada where industrial logging is still allowed. <laughs> Did not know that. Yeah, I mean, it's always done sustainably, so. Of course. Yeah. Trees are good though, they provide maple syrup. It's true, well, some of them do. Some of them, the some of them make like apples and or pine syrup. <laughs> I don't think that's so good. Selena talks about that you can get this birch juice or something, like made from birch sap. Ugh. Soon enough, we were back at the park, where we'd enjoy another classic winter activity. I got these terrible skates that aren't sharp at all, and they're just, I'd be better off with boots. Even if you've never played before, it's always a blast to play a little hockey with friends. So, as I mentioned before, I'm from Russia and we enjoy winter activities as much as Canadians do. And we have lots of activities, very similar. One of them is a bit different. We like saunas, so basically you go in a very, very hot room and you get very hot and after that you go outside. They have specifically designed cold water pools or cold buckets of water you could throw on yourself, you could just pull a string and it go, goes all over you. 
So the idea is you sit in a very, very hot room and then you get into something cold. Oh my God! This is so stupid! Well, it's the end of uh, day three, two and a half, heading into night three. Yeah, we'll call it day three. Yeah. Pretty good day, you know, uh, ice fishing adventure. Yep, that was great. Yep, uh, the only difficult part is for, for the uh, average camper is uh, the mornings thing. It's not the most enjoyable part, but you catch more fish in the morning generally. It's true, yep. It would've been nice to catch a big one to take home and eat, but. Yeah, they just weren't biting. Way she goes. All little fish, but yep. at least we caught a few, so. Trout. And uh, you know, hockey. And yeah, that was else. fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, and then you know, Selena jumping in the snow. Yeah. Always entertaining. Yep. Uh, looks very cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, overall, pretty good so far. The weather was a lot nicer today. Um, it was. Less cold. Like yesterday was minus 30. Today pretty windy, like, though. It was windy, but like not in the park area, though, yeah, at least. True. So, it's looking forward to tomorrow. We're going to head home. Uh, but before that, we're going to Arrowhead Provincial Park to uh, go on their famous skating trail, so which, which should be really nice. Looking forward to that. The snow fell as we greeted our final morning of the trip. We're heading out, packing up. Checkout time for the year is 10 a.m., so we quickly packed and hit the road, heading towards Huntsville and Arrowhead Provincial Park. Kind of sad to be going. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good trip though. It was, it was it, like very draining, I think. Like it just burned through a lot of energy. Like what we were doing wasn't simple. It wasn't just going, checking out tourist sites like we often have in the past and driving for eight hours in between everything. But on well, your body just trying to stay warm, right? Like just burn yeah. more energy than you'd think. And like it's cold out, but you definitely need to be drinking a lot of water because yeah, you're dehydrating yourself and eat a lot of calories, like just it's an excuse to eat pretty unhealthy for a few days because your body's burning off so many calories just to stay warm. Yeah. Well, I guess you could just not eat a lot of calories and then you'd lose a lot of weight, right? I guess so, but you <laughs> might, like, I don't know, die or something. Yeah, that's true. That's not always it's good. A bit of a risk. Yeah. I mean, definitely worth it. I think three nights was good. And yeah, we got to see quite a bit of wildlife, too. Yep. Moose. The moose is the coolest the part. I, I wish I uh, got better shots of that, but, like, when you're around animals like we were about 50 feet away from them i know the cameras don't really show that but we we're about 50 feet away from them and moose are huge animals you don't want to get too close to them and if they want to charge you they'll charge you and they'll charge you right through a tree yeah so you don't want to risk getting hurt and in this situation i, I didn't want to risk like flopping around with a bunch of lenses on my camera to get better shots and whatnot so like we, we got some shots from afar hopefully the viewers were able to see it but uh definitely something cool to experience for yourself and you might not see these type of animals on your first trip to Algonquin. You, you might have to come here a few times, but it's absolutely worth coming to this park. Yep. And if you ever see the, tra the tracks, the moose tracks, they always point the opposite way that they're actually going. We learned that. Yep. So here we are. We are at Arrowhead Provincial Park. We're ready for skating. So there is a very big famous skating trail here. It's more than a kilometer long and it goes through the forest. It's really beautiful and very well known and we're ready to check it out. Yeah, these skates wouldn't be too bad if, you know, they were sharpened or the laces went all the way up. But uh, the way it is, I'm kind of just wobbling all over the place, just fighting myself, so. Normally a good skater, but I just can't make these things work. So I tried skating two or three times, and it didn't really work pretty well for me. I think I need more practice, so I'm just enjoying their sitting by the fire. Yeah, this whole trip's been fantastic, you know. Um, I wasn't sure quite what to expect going into things. Like, you know, you read a lot of stuff about winter camping and, you know, you think it's gonna be cold, you think it's gonna be miserable, and it can easily get really, really bad, but we lucked out, we had really good weather the whole time. Uh, it got really cold, but you gotta expect that. It's February, we're in Northern Ontario. I think this uh, was a pretty amazing trip. Uh, it, it was 
my first time winter camping and uh, it definitely delivered. This camping trip was excellent. It's really interesting. I really enjoyed the yurt. Very cozy. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. I was surprised at how many people were around us at the campsite. It's pretty populated. Uh, my favorite part of the trip was the trail that we did. I'd have to say my favorite part of the whole trip was uh, when we were hiking. I think my favorite part was the hike. My favorite part was the hiking. Favorite part? Uh, was it the moose? Because of the moose, because I always wanted to see a moose. And seeing the moose, it was kind of a gold mine to at some time in the season, winter, fall, summer, whenever. We uh, came quite close to the moose. That's pretty cool, but I think that was everyone else's favorite spot, favorite part. Going down the stairs is pretty fun. Going down that really big set of stairs, like a slide. I also enjoyed sliding down the stairs. Watching animals die was pretty funny. <laughs> I think my favorite part was just spending time with uh, friends and family and just, you know, enjoying the weekend away from the city and getting back out into nature. What did I learn from the whole trip? That's a great question. I have learned how to change my clothes under the blanket with four other people around. Clothing really matters. Um, it's the number one thing that I learned this trip. Um, you really got to make sure you're, you're warm. I learned a bit of skating. <laughs> Would I do it again? Yes. Yeah, I'd definitely do it again. Yes, I definitely would do it again. Maybe try like a hot tent next time, a canvas tent. We saw a couple canvas tents around us. They look pretty, pretty neat. I would love to do winter camping again. Uh, I'd definitely do this again. Three days is the perfect amount of time. And yeah, it's a good trip. There's plenty to do. So yeah, I'd do it again for sure. All right, it's camping down. Is it? Ah, uh, it's on video. What? Uh, roll, roll credits. <laughs>